Right, thanks Tony, thanks Chris. Hi guys, welcome. Um, my name is Joe Behrens, I'm a senior tutor for Property Environments. My boss, Kimberly winston is not here right now. Uh, she's off doing a conference or shopping or something, I'm not sure. Uh, but she will be back in time for the start of semester, okay? So, uh, what I want to talk to you guys today, well look, I want you guys to, to understand a couple of things about property when you're considering why it is you might or might not wish to do this particular subject. And I'm doing that by start by telling you the story. So, does anybody recognise this building? Yeah, where is it? In Carlton. It's in Carlton, that's right. And it's just down there a little bit, well within walking distance. After it hits 12 o'clock, it's perfectly fine to drink, I've heard. And so you guys can wander down there and get yourself a nice beverage. Does anybody know why it's called the Shaw Davies Slum? Okay, well these guys have actually done this pub up recently. It's only been open for about a year and it's called the Shaw Davies Slum. It's a play on words because uh, they're referring back to a time in about the 1950s and 1960s when there was a housing commission area in Victoria. Guys that wandered around and made decisions about what was a worthwhile place to live in and what wasn't. And that's to the point at which they actually decided the places were slums or not slums, whether the houses stood or whether they were knocked down. And if you were living there, you didn't get a choice. You may, you are told you were either moving, that your house was being knocked down around you, and there was no options. The thing with Shaw and Davy is that those particular two guys actually, by rumour has it, conducted their surveys from their car. They drive around the streets of Carlton, wind down the window, point at a building and go, slum, knock it down. Never entered any of those particular buildings. Under these guys' auspicious recommendations, the number of slum houses in Carlton went from 6 to 35% in the space of two years. When they found a place they didn't like, they condemned the entire block. If there were houses in that particular area that were, you know, perfectly functional and very nice, too bad, the whole thing got knocked down. So if we go back a little bit and have a look at some of the history, in the 1930s, of course, there was some slum sort of housing there. There was people without running water. There was not some good snow, good sewage, that sort of thing around the place. And so something needed to be done. In their wisdom, the government decided to start building some places to ship people to force them to move to. So here's construction happening just before the end of the Second World War at Fisherman's Bend. In fact, they also thought it was a really good idea to take people that were single and force them to move into these particular flats. You could only move there if you were single, particularly if you were elderly, particularly if you were a woman. Force them all to live in the one space. Not particularly popular. Come up into the 1960s and there was a whole proposal under Sean Davies' recommendations to knock out almost all of the roads in an internal area of Carlton, turn them into mega blocks, and then build big housing structures on there to replace those houses. People didn't get a choice whether or not they could renovate their place, they didn't get a choice if they could stay or not. So, Lindy, you might like this next slide, because Lindy was actually part of the Carlton Association back in the 1960s. The guys have actually fought back against this. You can't do this, they said. And so, I couldn't find a picture of the Carlton Association. <laughs> This is as close as I could get. So Lindy, one of you is probably up there, maybe Green Lantern. And these guys fought back. They argued. They put bands together. They recruited people. They actually got guys like the Builders Labourers Federation to stop demolition of blocks. They fought back against the government. The government didn't get their way. And now, if you want to buy a house in Carlton, you can buy one that's well over 100 years old, but it'll probably set you back about $2 million. They tidied the place up quite nicely. So what do you learn from this? Okay, well, let's face it. Property comes across as quite a dry sort of topic. Really, it could be. Bricks and mortar, all that sort of stuff. But no, it's an emotional sort of thing. It's very emotional when it comes to people dealing with what is good, what is bad property. And there are rules and regulations. Even governments can't do what they like. They can't necessarily kick you out of your place if you're the kind of person that has able, is able to fight back, particularly as a collective group. In the current climate, therefore, we're looking at this particular instance where we're being told that the, co the property market is slowing down, that even at some point we might end up with a reduction in house prices, where we might start to lose money in the investments we've got. How do you know? We've just talked about how it is that emotion can play such a strong part. We've talked about how there can be good houses and bad houses in the same block, good areas and bad places to live. If you want to have some idea about what the value of the property is, you need to know something about those things. How are prices, where are prices going up? Where are they going down? It's different in different areas. Teach you a thing or two about that. And then secondly, once you have a, have a property, what are your rights? 
So we're going to teach you about that sort of stuff in this subject. And this is relevant to everybody, particularly those in construction, but if you want to do property, a property and construction and those kind of majors, urban planning. But if you're doing architecture, you want to do landscape architecture, then sure as hell you want to know the rights around what it is that you're going to design, because if you design something that can't be built, then you're an idiot. Okay, so we'll also look at some social and political and cultural issues. We will send you out to Northcote, have a look at the, at the properties out there, see all how variable they are, see how different they are, be able to make some distinctions about what should and shouldn't happen in those areas because of the kind of people that live there. We'll put you into a, into a boardroom context and have you argue VTAP kind of style argument where you're fighting for your rights against other people in a particular, particular area. And then we will show you how to actually make some kind of valuation of a property so you can work out what properties are worthwhile and what properties are not worthwhile in a particular locality. So, conclusion. Well, that's assignment three. Why are we doing that? There we go. In conclusion, that's Jack Mundy. Uh, he's one of the BLF guys. He was actually in New South Wales. He was arrested, carried away um, for the bans that they put in place against the demolition of old buildings in there because property is an emotional issue. You guys should do this subject. Right, thanks. <laughs>